Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today we're going to talk about that he's always more than enough. And I don't know about you, but today I think I'm going to need to read the words that I wrote quite a while ago and apply them to today. Through their example, my parents taught me how to give unconditionally. Upon hearing of a need, they never hesitated to help meet that need, although they were not well off. One day in my late teens, in earshot of my parents, my brother and I made plans to go grocery shopping for a young couple that we knew. They had a toddler and there was another baby on the way. They lived on a small acreage and they didn't have gas money or any money to drive to the nearest supermarket. They also needed diapers and milk for their toddler and I knew how empty their fridge was. We were frustrated by the foolish decisions that the couple made that caused them to be in this situation, but we still knew they needed help. Immediately, my parents sprang into action. My mom raided our pantry and freezer. Before we knew it, we were carrying bags full of canned goods, toilet paper, powdered milk, and frozen meat to my brother's car. My parents didn't care why the young couple were in such dire straits. After all, they had made some pretty foolish decisions themselves when they were first married. My parents always opened their home during the holidays. Everybody was invited to come early and stay late. At Christmas time, my mother somehow stretched an already tight budget to make sure that there was at least a small wrapped gift under the tree for each guest. I fondly remember games of charades, Monopoly, gin, and crib being played into the small hours of the night. I also have some unpleasant memories of guests who were not as gracious to my parents as my parents were to them. I remember one Christmas in particular. We had just moved from the dining room to the living room after a great meal. The dishes were done and drinks were at hand. Cookies and snacks lay in easy reach and the conversation drifted to religion. Never a good sign. Two of our guests decided it was an appropriate time to make sure my mother knew that she was doomed to hell unless she repented and left the church that she attended. Another guest chimed in with her disapproval of the cigarettes and beer that was in evidence. It took a big effort by the rest of us to steer the conversation away from the judgmental discussion. I was terribly embarrassed and I knew my mother's feelings were hurt. Although my parents remained good hosts, I ensured my brother's friends were not invited back unless they were willing to offer an apology for their horrible behavior. Many years later, several friends who shared that particular Christmas expressed their gratitude and marveled at my mother's patience. My sister now carries on this tradition. She learned it well. She is a marvelous and welcoming host. I am blessed to be a friend of a generous God who lavishes his freedom, love, forgiveness, and healing on me. He asked me that I do the same, extending his grace, peace, and love to those around me. I do so without judgment or expecting repayment and without fear that I will lack because I gave. The more I pour into the lives of others, the more God increases my capacity to receive from him. I can never outgive God. I know when I reach into his pantry, there will always be more than enough for myself, and there is always more than enough to give to others. Healing, love, forgiveness, and freedom 
he freely gave to me and freely I give to others. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7 to 11. I encourage you to read this on your own time, but I'm going to read a couple of the verses within this. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So here's a personal application. Perhaps you have not been a gracious guest or you have taken people's generosity towards you for granted and you have developed a sense of entitlement. And entitlement always kills compassion and it also kills a thankful heart, which is a pretty sad state of affairs. Or perhaps you're on the other end. Perhaps you have been giving out to others and you are starting to feel that they are not very receptive to what you have given to them or they haven't even said thank you. Remember in those sorts of cases, although it can be difficult, that the Lord will reward you for your generosity and their lack of thankfulness and gratitude has nothing to do with God's command to give cheerfully.